In the previous episode, I left you with a little cliffhanger. We extracted partial trajectories from a voice recording and saved them into the matrices. With that, we arrived at a compressed, flexible representation of audio data at the cost of lower fidelity. For naturalistic rendering, our prototype is too crude, but for an artistic playground, it provides plenty material. Let's set out to reassemble those partials and explore how we can transform them. We've saved frequency and amplitude data in files with corresponding suffixes underscore freak dot chit and underscore amp dot chit. In the resolve path subpatcher, I have set up a clean way of obtaining the current patcher's path name and combining it with a file prefix 01 underscore 2D underscore wavetable. The conform path object converts between file path styles to prepare our file names for the next step, loading the matrices. The first argument, max, specifies the path style attribute, which in our case fits best since we do not interact with any third-party tools. The second argument, boot, requests that the file path be specified as relative to the current boot volume. This is included here specifically to strip the leading Macintosh HD colon slash part of the file URL, which would lead to trouble later. You can find more about this awesome object on its reference page. We then go on and read those matrices from the files with the specified root file name and display them in JITP windows. What's more, we load the original WAVE file into a buffer. We need this to obtain the exact length of it in milliseconds from an info object. In the send frame count subpatcher, we take the reciprocal value of the respective time and multiply it by 1000 to get an appropriate frequency for a phaser to loop over our jitter matrices. Simultaneously, we convert milliseconds to samples to multiply the phaser's output and then divide by the frame size in samples, 1024, to get a valid precision in our matrices. This is our frame count, which we then send to the JIT peaks. Let's construct our poly voice next. We receive our frame count and pipe it into the JIT peak for each matrix, accompanied by the zero based voice number. So far so good. If we leave it at this and wrap it in a poly object, we already have a working resynthesis and it's even pretty intelligible, but it sounds choppy. Our good old friend, the wavetail oscillator. We use it to look up waveforms of varying character. This is because oscillators jump to new frequencies amplitudes at frame boundaries. We can alleviate that by providing a slide object for each of the parameters to interpolate between successive frames.
And while we're at it, we can also expose the slide up and slide down parameters to tweak them from our main patcher. Now we already have two parameters to play with and produce interesting effects. Our good old friend, the wavetail oscillator. We use it to look up waveforms of varying character, play them at aleatory speeds, and enjoy nice additional features such as interpolation, provided by friendly helper objects such as Wave, our good old friend, the wavetail oscillator. We use it to look up waveforms of varying character, play them at aleatory speeds, and enjoy nice additional features such as interpolation. Let's create the second one. Because our playback section is essentially just a modulated additive synthesizer, we can easily adjust the playback speed of our sinusoidal model. All we have to do is plug in a multiplication in our phases frequency calculation. Here we use a live slider to specify it from outside. We just have to take care of re-triggering the calculation by hooking it up to the input 2. Interpolation provided by friendly helper objects such as Wave, our good old friend, the Wavetail Oscillator. Now we can accelerate, decelerate, reverse, or freeze our data stream. Varying character, play them at aleatory speed, and enjoy nice additional features such as interpolation provided by friendly helper objects such as Wave, our good old friend, Photograph. We also suggest we have a hinder for the hour. With the interpolation parameters from above, those are already uh, plenty of interesting options to dabble with. Can you come up with some more?